The government orders an independent investigation into the Met's handling of a vigil for Sarah Everard. Police action at Clapham Common last night has been widely condemned as heavy-handed and unnecessary. The Met says it had to enforce COVID rules to keep people safe. What I saw was the police creating a public health risk. They pushed people closer together. They stood very close to people and shouted at them, shouted at me. That's the public health risk that I saw yesterday. It did not come from the people who were gathered here. Labour says it will now vote against the government's key crime bill, claiming it doesn't do enough to make women safe. Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe awaits another verdict in Iran after she's accused of propaganda against the regime. And the Mother's Day tribute to Granny Diana from George, Charlotte and Louis. This is ITV News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good afternoon. The government has ordered an independent review of the Metropolitan Police's handling of a vigil held to remember Sarah Everard. Yesterday evening, policemen pinned women to the ground and handcuffed them after hundreds had gathered in South London in memory of the 33-year-old murdered as she walked home. Well, senior officers at the Met say they had to enforce COVID regulations to keep people safe. But the Mayor of London says he is not satisfied with that explanation and is calling for individual officers to face action. Our UK editor, Paul Brand, reports. Sarah Everard! Say her name! Sarah Everard! They had gathered here to remember. And what unfolded on Clapham Common last night is another reason why they won't forget. At the end of a week that's questioned the treatment of women, they were arrested shoved and pushed to the floor. They arrested me in cuffs, dragged me away, surrounded by like 10 police officers. And, um, and when I got in the van, they said, we just need your name and your address and then we'll, we'll let you go with the fine. So I don't see the point of the arrest, to be honest. Sarah Everard's death was already directing anger at police when one of their own is charged with causing it. Having banned last night's vigil due to the pandemic, police say they were just trying to protect other safeties. We accept that the actions of our officers have been questioned. We absolutely did not want to be in a position where enforcement action was necessary. But we were placed in this position because of the overriding need to protect people's safety. But those who came to pay their respects here last night say the scenes were of the Met's making. What I saw was the police creating a public health risk. They pushed people closer together. They stood very close to people and shouted at them, shouted at me. That's the public health risk that I saw yesterday. It did not come from the people who were gathered here. Thousands of people have come here again today to Clapham Common. This is simply what the organisers of last night's visuals say they had wanted to do, to pause, to remember, to continue to highlight women's safety. Yet now there are further questions about whether that safety can be entrusted to police. That issue of trust goes to the top, to the commissioner herself, with calls for Dame Cresta Dick to resign. Tonight, the Home Secretary has asked for a review into her policing as the government demands answers. There do seem to have been these instances later on in the evening um, where there are scenes and photographs that are incredibly upsetting. So I suspect the report, I hope, will address all of those issues so that we get a full picture of the decisions that were made yesterday. The Mayor of London also wants individual officers investigated as Labour puts its own pressure on the police. Everybody who saw the images and footage of what happened last night would find it really disturbing. Um, it was the wrong response from the police. It's right that it's now being looked into and there will be these uh, reports now. The only officers in Clapham today were quietly observing. But last night's scenes add to the pain of those who feel they've seen enough. Paul Brand, ITV News, South London. Well, Frankie McCamley is outside New Scotland Yard this afternoon, the Met Police headquarters where a fresh protest has been taking place. Frankie, what's the situation there? 
Well, in the last half an hour, we've had around 100 people down here calling for the reform for the Metropolitan Police. In the last few moments, they've just left New Scotland Yard and made their way down the road as they head towards Parliament Square. The organisers said this was a second vigil following on from events in Clapham Common last night, but this really felt like a protest. A protest speaking directly to London's Met Police and Crime Commissioner Cressida Dick, calling for answers as to why her officers acted in the way they did last night. It's not just people here who have been calling for answers. We've heard from the Home Secretary, who's asking for a review. And also the London's Mayor, Sadiq Khan, who says he's spoken with London's London Metropolitan Police and Crime Commissioner Cressida Dick and said he wasn't satisfied with the answers she gave. Well, as pressure builds here in Westminster, we're expected Cressida Dick to speak later on this afternoon. All right, Frankie, thank you. Campaigners say the response to the death of Sarah Everard shows that the legal system fails to provide women the protection they need to feel safe. Labour has announced it will vote against the government's key crime legislation tomorrow, saying the new laws could lead to harsher penalties for damaging a statue than for attacking a woman. Conservative ministers have pledged to reform the justice system, including tougher sentences for sex offenders. Our political correspondent Romilly Weeks reports. Amongst the grief and the desire to remember Sarah Everard, who was doing what we should all be able to do, just walking home, there is now for many women and those who love them a determination that her death should be a catalyst for change. The government has reopened a consultation on its strategy on violence against women and girls and is promising this. There's nothing off the table at the moment. We are looking at this with a very, very open mind because I want us to you know, be able to look women in the eye and to be able to say that we are doing this to help you uh, in your day-to-day -day experiences, just as I hope in a few years' time, I hope we'll be able to point to the enormous changes that the domestic abuse bill will have had on domestic abuse. But you only have to look at the most recent statistics on rape in England and Wales to see how much more needs to be done. Rape prosecutions fell by over 30%. Convictions were down by a quarter, despite the number of rapes being reported staying almost constant. Labour say this week's police and sentencing bill is a missed opportunity. It doesn't do anything to improve the safety of women on our streets. There's nothing about street harassment in it. There is absolutely nothing about uh, violence against women and girls really in it at all. There is huge amounts of things that we could change. The murder of Sarah Everard has caused many women to reflect on the fear and vigilance that's become part of everyday female experience. The careful choosing of your route home in the dark, the all too frequent diffusing of unwanted male attention, the clocking of which passerby might help, even the shoes you wear in case you need to run. The sharing of these stories has not just highlighted how the streets we all walk hold very specific fears for women, but how normal that's become. It has resonated so strongly with so many young women who feel that the streets are lawless, that the criminal justice system doesn't protect them and doesn't punish the random threats to their safety that they have to deal with day by day. Surely that voice, half the population, cannot be ignored. On a Mother's Day clouded with pain, what women are asking for today is not flowers or words, but an acknowledgement that this is everyone's problem. Romilly Weeks, ITV News. Nazneen Zaghari Ratcliffe has appeared in court in Iran today, a week after finishing her five-year prison sentence for spying. The British-Iranian charity worker from London faced a new charge of propaganda against Iran. Well, Martha Fairley joins me now. Martha, what more can you tell us about these new charges? Well, this trial was, in fact, a continuation of a trial that had been adjourned last November against uh, Nazneen Zaghari Ratcliffe on charges that were first brought against her in 2017. Now, the hearing lasted about 20 minutes, during which Nazanin made a statement to the court and clarified she didn't accept the charge. And she's been told this was the final hearing and a verdict is expected in around a week. Now, her husband, Richard Ratcliffe, told me earlier that Nazanin's overall feeling is one of relief, although they're uncertain what might happen. Our greatest worry was that there was going to be a series of court cases with this dragged out as a bargaining. That hasn't happened. Um, that doesn't mean to say we're not still going to get a prison sentence. 
every time we've ever been in the revolutionary court and everyone we ever know that's gone to the revolutionary court gets sentenced. So, um, you know, she remains uncertain, but at the same time, um, we're glad that's over. Now, Richard Ratcliffe also welcomed what he described as the Foreign Secretary's unequivocal statement made today in which Dominic Grubb said it was unacceptable and unjustifiable that Iran has chosen to continue with this second case. Dominic Grubb has also called for Nazanin to be allowed to return home to her family in the UK without delay. And uh, he said the Iranian government has deliberately put her through a cruel and inhumane ordeal. It has, however, been widely claimed that she's being held as leverage by Iran uh, for a debt it claims is owed by the UK and that she may not be released until that's resolved. Mm, all right, Martha, thank you. Ireland's Deputy Chief Medical Officer says the use of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine should be temporarily suspended. It follows a report from Norway that recorded four serious blood clots in adults who had had the jab. In all, there have been 30 cases of clotting issues among the 5 million Europeans who have been vaccinated. Well, the World Health Organization has said there is no evidence linking the jab to an increased risk of developing a clot. The FA Cup final rescheduled for the 15th of May at Wembley Stadium is likely to be played in front of 20,000 fans. It's one of a number of pilot events planned by the government to test the return of big crowds to venues this year. And one of the greatest boxers ever to step into a ring has died aged 66. Marvellous Marvin Hagler dominated the middleweight division in the 1980s, reigning as the undisputed world champion for seven years. In all, he won 62 of his 67 professional fights. Football, Chelsea crushed Bristol City 6-0 in the Women's League Cup final. Australian international Sam Kerr stole the show, scoring three of the goals for the holders. Dan Salisbury-Jones was watching. Chelsea won this cup last year and after thrashing Bristol City twice already this season, they were hot favourites to win it again. Their world-class talent wasted no time as Frank Kirby gave Sam Kerr a simple tap-in within the first two minutes. There would be no slowing down. Kerr had more to do for her second, not just for the goal, but the celebration too. Can you do that? Her teammate Kirby may or may not be able to, but she can certainly punish a mistake. She's still off the line. City's goalkeeper Sophie Bagley couldn't quite get back in time to stop that, and she couldn't prevent Kirby making it four before half time. Chelsea's ruthless boss Emma Hayes was plotting for even more and she got it when Kirby was in for a hat-trick and then selfishly set up Kerr to complete her own. Gura Wrighton made it six and a party could begin. They'll want an invite to three more before the season ends. Dan Salisbury-Jones, ITV News. In the men's, Leicester are up to second in the Premier League table after a 5-0 thrashing of struggling Sheffield United. Kalichi Inacho scored a hat-trick for the former champions with two of his goals come in nine second-half minutes. In rugby, Six Nations, Ireland, uh, it's all square at Murrayfield. Uh, Ireland scored early in both halves. Uh, you can just make out Tigburn going over the visitors' second here after the referee confirmed the try. Scotland have struck back twice in the final 20 minutes. It is currently 24 all. And finally, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis have paid tribute to their granny Diana on Mother's Day. Posting on social media, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge shared cards and drawings made by their three children saying Diana was loved and missed. Well, William and Kate went on to deliver a message to everyone on Mothering Sunday saying whatever your circumstances, we are thinking of you. That's it. I'm back with the late news at 10. Until then, enjoy your day. Bye bye.